we're going to look at the slopes of these lines shown. The letter M is often used to denote the slope of a line. So I will denote the slope of this line here by M1. You can say this is the first line that we're looking at. The slope of a horizontal line is 0. I will call the slope of this line M2. To calculate M2, or the slope of any line, um, we pick two points on the line. So what I will do is I will choose these points here. That's, I, that's how I set this up so it's easy for me to calculate the slope. In order to calculate the slope, we get the horizontal distance between the lines. Just We can just work this out by reading it off here. You can see that the horizontal distance is 4 units. And then we look at the vertical distance between the lines. And you can see from this diagram that the vertical distance is 3 units. Sometimes the horizontal distance is called a run, and the vertical distance is called a rise. To get the slope, we put divide the rise by the run. So the rise is 3, the run is 4. So the slope of this line is 3 quarters. Let's look at this line here. I will call the slope of this line M3. We look at the horizontal distance between this point and this point. We see that it's 3. Of course, I can pick any two points on this line. I could pick this point here and this point here. Except it's not so easy to work out the rise and run for these two points. So I've just set up so that if we use the end points of this line segment, we can easily read off the slope. The vertical distance between this point and this point is 3, as you can see. So the slope is 3 divided by 3. We just put the rise, the vertical distance over the run, the horizontal distance. And for this line, we get a slope of 1. For this line here, we look at these two points on the line. The horizontal distance between them is 1 unit. The vertical distance between them is 2 units. So if I call the slope of this line M4, we see that M4 is rise over run, 2 over 1, which is 2. So you can see what's happening here. The lines have increasing slope. We started off with a slope of 0. If we were to calculate the rise over the run for this line down here, we could pick any two points on it, say these two points. We don't have to pick the end points. Uh, we would get the vertical distance between the points. So, the rise in this situation between these two points is 0. So we've rise over run. Well, the run would for these two points is 1. So we have 0 divided by 1, but that's a 0, of course. 0 divided by any number, well, except for 0. We can't divide 0 by 0, but 0 divided by any non-zero number is 0. Because 0 times 1 is 0 in this case. So it's true for any horizontal line, the slope is 0. Now, we see that the slopes are going from 0 to 3 quarters to a slope of 1. Actually, a line with a slope of 1 makes a 45 degree angle with the x-axis. Um, the next line has a slope of 2, so the lines are getting steeper. And the most extreme situation is a line that is vertical. So we will call the slope of this line M5. And to get its slope, we pick two points on it, say the two end points of this line. So the rise, or the vertical distance between these two points is 2. But the run, the horizontal distance between these two points is 0. So we have 2 divided by 0. Now this is not defined. Well, you could call it infinite, if you like. Um, we can't divide any number by 0, basically. So this is not really defined. We could say the slope is infinite, but we don't really um, give a value to the slope of a vertical line. Let's look at this line here. I will call the slope of this line M6. So let's use the two endpoints. Let's get the horizontal distance between them. Well, the horizontal distance between them is 1, as you can see. The vertical distance, or, run, or rise, sorry, is 2. So you might say the answer is 2 over 1. 
it's got this line here has got the same slope of this line over here. However, the direction of slope is different. This line is sloping down the way. So what we do is stick a minus sign in front of this. I'll explain more about the negative sign later. So the slope of this line is said to be minus 2, as opposed to the slope of this line over here, which is plus 2. Both lines are equally steep, if you like. It's just that they slope in different directions. Now let's look at the slope of this line here. Um, its slope has the same magnitude as this line over here. This is 3, this is 3, but it's got an, this line has a negative slope. So it's minus 1. Similarly here, the magnitude of the slope of this line is the same as this one. Uh, the rise and run have the same lengths. So the rise is 3 units, the run is 4. But we say the slope, which I would call M8 for this line, is minus 3 quarters. Let's look at the slope formula. The slope of the line joining the points x1, y1 and x2, y2 is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, as I explained to you earlier, y2 minus y1 is the vertical distance between the two points, sometimes called a rise. x2 minus x1 is the horizontal distance between the points, called a run. So when we subtract the y values of the points, we're actually getting the vertical distance between the two points. And when we subtract the x values, we're getting the horizontal distance. So let's look at a few examples. We want to find the slopes of the lines joining the following pairs of points. 2 minus 2 and 6, 1. So let's write down these two points and label them. So our formula works for any two points, x1, y1 and x2, y2. So we call one of the points x1, y1. So you can write x1, y1 above one of them. And the other point you call x2, y2. So you write down the formula and plug in the values. y2 is 1, then we have a minus sign. y1 is minus 2. x2 is 6, then we have a minus sign. x1 is 2. So let's calculate this here. 1 minus minus 2 means 1 plus 2, which is 3. 6 minus 2 is 4, we get 3 quarters. Actually, what we just did was get the slope of this line here. You can see that the coordinates of this point here are 2 minus 2 we call x1, y1, and the coordinates of this point up here are 6, 1, which we call x2, y2. Of course, it doesn't matter which way we label this. I could have labeled the point 6, 1, x1, y1, and the point six, uh, 2, minus 2, x2, y2. If we label them the other way around, we'd actually get minus 3 over minus 4. But minus 3 over minus 4 is the same thing as plus 3 quarters, so it doesn't matter which point you call x1, y1. So you can see clearly here that y2 minus y1, the vertical distance from the diagram is 3. x2 minus x1, the horizontal distance between the two points, is 4. Now let's look at part 2. I've labelled the first point minus 2 minus 2, x1, y1, and the second point I've labelled x2, y2. We plug the values into this formula. y2 is 1 here, then we have a minus sign. y1 is minus 2 over x2 is minus 6, then we have a minus sign, x1 is minus 2. So 1 minus minus 2 is 1 plus 2, which is 3. Minus 6 minus minus 2 is minus 6 plus 2, which is minus 4. So we have plus 3 divided by minus 4. Plus divided by minus is a minus, so we get minus 3 quarters. You can put the minus sign wherever you like. I'm going to write it next to the division sign. So we get a negative slope. So that means the line joining these two points is sloping in this direction, sloping down the way. As a matter of fact, it's the slope of this line here. This is the line in part 2. This point here has coordinates minus 2, 2. That was the point we called x1, y1. And this point has coordinates uh, minus 6, 1. Minus 6 is not shown here. So this point is minus 6, 1, and uh, comes out to be negative because the line is sloping down the way. Let's look at the slope of this line here. We can pick any two points we like on the line. For example, we could pick this point here and this point here and get the slope. 
So if we have the coordinates of these two points, we can plug them into this formula and get the slope. Well, the coordinates of this point are minus 2, minus 2, and the coordinates of this point here are minus 1, 0. Okay, this is a point on the x-axis, so y is 0. And we can label them x1, y1, and x2, y2. Plug the values into our formula, what do we get? We get y2 minus y1, 0 minus minus 2. Well, that's 0 plus 2, which is 2, over x2 minus x1. So we have minus 1 minus minus 2. That's minus 1 plus 2, which is plus 1. So we get m equals 2 divided by 1 is 2. Of course, we could have chosen any two points. Um, you know, we could choose this point here and say this point here, and we'll get the same answer. We don't have to do any calculation here. We can just read it off from this diagram. y2 minus 1 for these two points is 4. x2 minus x1, the horizontal distance between the points is 2. So the slope is 4. We put y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, 4 over 2, which is 2. So we get the same answer. We get a slope of 2. So we can pick any points we like any two points we like on the line. We get two right angle triangles that are similar. Similar means that the angles in, in them are the same. Obviously the right angle is the same in both of these triangles. But not only that, we see that this angle here is the same as this angle here. And the angle up here, which I can call which I'll call X, is the same. So these are known as similar triangles. Similar or equiangular. The angles are the same. The ratios of the sides are the same. So the ratio of the vertical to horizontal is the same for similar right angle triangles. We can think of the slope of a line in another way. What you do is consider picking any point on the line say this point here, then increase x by one unit. So we draw a line to the right of length one unit. And then you see how far up or down you have to go to meet the line. Now in this case we have to go up to meet the line. And the distance that you go to meet the line is the slope of the line. So this distance here is the slope. In this case it's two of course. We know that the slope of the line is two. If we have to go up to meet the line, the slope is positive, plus 2, as you can see here. If after increasing x by 1, um, you have to go down to meet the line, then the slope of the line is negative. Look at this line here. Imagine picking any point on the line. Let's say we pick this point here. happens to be convenient for uh, reading off the slope. Increase x by 1 unit. You see now that to complete our right angle triangle, we have to draw down to meet the line. And if, if we have to draw down to meet the line, then the line has negative slope. So the slope of this line is minus 2. So we get this distance here. It's 2 units long. And we stick a minus sign in front because we have to go down to meet the line. So this line is sloping down the way. Another way to consider the slope of a line is imagine that you are walking in the positive x direction. So you're walking along the x-axis to the right and you're looking at your line and if it's if the y values of it are decreasing as you go from left to right then the slope of the line is negative. If the y values of it are increasing as you're walking left to right then the slope is positive. We always um, consider the perspective of somebody moving from left to right along the x-axis when we're thinking of the sine of the slope of a line. 